Hey brothers, and the occasional sister, Sunday morning and it's rain and the paddock's wet and I'm wet, that's okay. I want to talk about inflexibility. I don't know if that's the right word I'm looking for. I had a conversation this morning with a very close friend of mine. She works with people with dementia, she works with elderly, she works with people, she's a carer and we're talking about how men of my age and older can often become inflexible and the damage that it does to their lives with their families and their friends around them and so often the children leave the home and mum goes oh the kids have gone and she like starts doing something different with her hair or starts wearing different types of clothes she might go out and buy a wee sports car because she feels kind of free and dad keeps on chugging away working doing what he's always done comes home expects his dinner or at six o'clock and mum's out doing something because she's just started a new club somewhere she's dancing with her new dance partner Nigel who's just like that so he's no threat to dad but this happens so often and the women reinvent themselves when the kids are left home but the men don't and they stay fixed in their ways and they're inflexible to change stuff and it divides families I know I've seen it firsthand Dad's, I'm not going to do this, and that's not going to change, and it's always going to stay the same. And meanwhile, the world goes around and grows, and technology change, and globalisation brings new things to the table. And Dad's like, nope, that's the way it is. And these inflexible people often find themselves alone, thinking, what the hell went wrong? I worked hard my whole life. Mum's gone, bug it off. The kids are off here, I'm at home, and they've got nothing. And you see it all the time with older blokes. You can't even have a conversation about something and no pace. You can't get through there, mate. You can't have a conversation. It's like they're shouting at you what it is instead of saying, how do you feel about this? So today's bro check video is for you to check on yourself if you're my age or older about how flexible you are with topics and things, diet. I find a lot of men that I help with the keto diet, getting them their health right and that, but they're like, oh no, I'm not giving up my spuds. Oh no, I'm not giving up my kumara. No, I'm not giving up my rice. Oh no, I'm not giving up my fish and chips on a Friday night though. Or I'm not giving up my beer. And I say to them, well, that's okay. If you want to keep on having diabetes type 2 and you want to keep on having heart disease, carry on. I don't mind, but uh, you always got to give up something to gain something. Nothing comes that you know that, but they won't budge. And then I've got that very rare 4 or 5% of men that have made the change and today, well, their whole lives are completely turn around if you're not flexible and prepared to try new things then you're always going to get what you've always got but I've said that before so in a relationship with uh, your family and your, your children and your kids and your people all around you views are going to be different people are going to have different ideas about different things and if you're so inflexible that you're not even going to hear them out eventually what often happens is there's division and it's the men that go, well, bugger you, bugger off. And then they'll cut the family, they'll cut themselves out of the family, but they're cutting off their nose to spite their face. And we need our family. Family's everything. This morning I woke up, looked at the time, like you do when you wake up first thing. Went to check the weather to see whether I was going fishing or what I was going to do today. My son, there was a knock, knock, knock on the door. It was my son. He knocked on the door, Dad. And he's 21, my son. And he come into the room there. And I, I love just... That's a great way to start the day for me. Family's everything. And he walked in and we just had a, a father-son talk. We talked about topics like drugs. I was telling him the story about how uh, cocaine. I was saying how that uh, I did this wedding once down south. And I went out to the car park during my break. And there was all these brand new Hiluxes and brand new Fords and brand new Toyota Land Cruisers. And all the dashboards were lit up. And everybody had gone out and they're all like snorting stuff off the dash of these vehicles. They're all rich farmers. The farmer that had imported the drug into the country himself for his own use had shouted something like $100,000 worth of this recreational drug for all his mates for the party. And they were like, oh yeah, we're all onto it. And my son thought it was an interesting story. But that's the sort of stories we talk about, things that have happened and things we've witnessed. And it's great to have a, a son to talk about these things because I talk to you guys, but sharing it with my blood it's interesting it's funny it's humorous it's entertaining it keeps life interesting 
and I never want to become an old fuddy-duddy who's so inflexible myself that I don't listen to the younger generation and try to keep up with what's going on to some degree. Some people uh, just completely like they're almost anti the younger generation because they don't understand because they're so different. What we're going to remember is that the younger generation come from us. We're the ones that raise them. So it's like, you better be careful about that one, mate, because we're the ones that actually brought them into this world and we're responsible for them being here and how they have evolved and the education that we've given them and everything around it. And we become so inflexible, it's like, oh, young kids today just don't know what hard work is, or young kids today, their music sucks. That's some flexibility, because young kids can do, can do a lot of things that we just can't possibly do. And this thing I'm holding my hand right now on my phone, every time I have a problem with it, I give it to someone young, because they can work it out. I don't know how, how it really does work, whether it's an app for something. There's so many things, but we tend to be, as we get older, more almost scared of technology going forward, and this is what we see with globalisation. We see this with technology. It robs jobs from people. The things that I used to be able to do are not so useful anymore. I used to be able to take, take the top off a, an engine and do a valve grind. Well, I used to do it. Probably done three, I think. No, I'll tell a lie, I've done two. I did an A40 Farina and I did my J4 van where I took the top off and gave it a valve grind with valve paste and spinning the old bloody stick. Now, most young people wouldn't have a clue what that was or even do that today because we just don't do that. You'd send it to, well, you you probably replace the whole vehicle because it's so much cheaper. But those sorts of things have become obsolete, those skills. But there's new skills that have taken place. Check yourself. Check your own flexibility. Think about that. And when I say flexibility, I'm talking of the mind. I'm not talking about doing yoga, although that's not a bad thing to get into either as you get older too. But check how inflexible you might be and be prepared to open up a little bit because it may just save you and your family from having a family feud and finally having division. It's, it's a thing that I'm seeing more and more and hearing more and more. Men are more inflexible than women. That's a fact. Women change themselves, they recreate themselves, and generally they, they network better and create new exciting things for them, whereas men just keep on plodding, doing the same thing, expecting everything to be fantastic instead of keeping up with what's changing around them. And right now we're in a world that's changing drastically, rapidly. So be flexible, be prepared to be wrong, be prepared to try new things, and have a bloody good day. Right, I'm going to carry on my dog. Get him, Pace. So these two dogs in the paddock. Pace, come on. Yeah, Pace. Pace, come. And he's out because he's crawled under the drain. He's worked out a way to get out. Pace, come. Come. What do I say, mate? Pace, come. You can smell a rabbit. Come on, get in. Good boy. Currently, I'm teaching my dog, Bigsy, to pull the cart. We're going to do a mission. That's a story for another day. G'day, Bigsy. Okay, have a fantastic day. Uh, go steady, and we'll see you in the next video. Bigsy, get him behind.